I pray for water. I just I, another kind of break up song, but I wanted to do something kind of gospely sounding, which is why it's called I Pray for Water. And it's just literally just that you know, that uh, relating the idea of you, know, you feel like you, know, you swing back and forth after a breakup between you know oh they they fucking did so many wrong things to what did I do wrong to oh you know I hate them to oh I hate myself. And this is just one of those I hate myself ones where you're kind of like you know, trying to wash out your own sins in the water. That's the metaphor anyway. So I wanted to do some gospel kind of old brother wear out the ish. Um, and the guitar sound is just there was a guitar sound on the big like, fucking the, uh, multi effects pedal that I got that just made the guitar almost sound like a synth rather than a guitar. So, I released two albums in 2020, um, and that was the first that I'd released after like, uh, basically in like five years, five or six years, um, uh, because I, I took that time off to, as you so eloquently put it, to go drinking. <laughs> so, um, and then just, I don't know, I, I started getting back into music and started doing that stuff and I had the two albums and I released those and then when it came around to thinking about what I would do next I had like four songs and I was thinking of releasing an EP and then it was just the four songs were so they, they sounded like an extension of my first EP that I released in like 2013 um, and my original idea, right, was to I remastered I remastered the first EP and then re-released that, and it, which was part that was, it was partly as well due to the fact that that I had released everything under just Grim, and then I, when I went to search for it on Spotify, there's like fucking eighty three billion Grims. Well, okay, that that is a, obviously a gross exaggeration. Essentially, what it was was that I noticed that there were seven. 16 other Grimms, so in order to be able to be found easier on streaming platforms, I decided to change it to Grim 17. But I was releasing everything through DistroKid, and trying to edit anything on DistroKid is basically impossible. So I had to delete everything from fucking DistroKid and then start a different thing up and as Grim 17. And I noticed that I didn't have any of the EPs or anything out anyway, and so I decided I'll remaster the first EP and put that out, and then it'll give me a precursor to releasing this new EP that I had. And what, so that was my idea, but I happened to be chatting to Mike from Lights and Lines at the time, and he'd just started up Lights and Lines, and he had had this plan to release uh, music by this other guy called Gozer Goodspeed. And so he got in touch with me and just went, um, I'm starting up this label, and would it, would you like me to release your thing? Well, the thing is, I was a fan of his music first, so that's that's where it started, really, is, so my mate, uh, Bonesy, who has for many years uh, run a podcast called New Music Saturday, um, and for about seven years I've co-hosted it with him, he asked me, and I've just not stopped, it's been really good fun, um, and one of the artists that I, I, I think I heard on the show before I co-hosted it was Grimm. Um, I just thought he was brilliant. So I kind of, you know, followed him in various places. Um, not that he was very active on social media or anything, but just kind of, you know, I had the tracks that Bones had sent me through and stuff like that. 
And then when he reappeared, uh, and we, even though he didn't release anything for a while, he had that kind of five year gap in the middle. Um, when he reappeared, we'd already still been playing on the podcast, even though it's called New Music Saturday. By this point, some of the tunes were no longer new. It's just like, we would play them every now and again. We're both big fans. Um, he released the new stuff and he was just like, wow, this is, this is fucking brilliant, basically. But that's, that's it, really. It's kind of, I just was a fan and I liked him. I liked his approach and it just kind of worked out that we wanted to do this thing together. He liked the story of me having a certain amount of success back in the day and then everything that I went through and the fucking, you know, taking those years off to go and fucking, you know, salve my emotional wounds badly. Uh, and boy, did I do it badly. Um, and then coming back and, you know, doing this now. And he just, he liked that story and he liked that it was parts one and two, you know, that there was a, an original digital throw up and then I was going to release this other one that, that I was going to call part two. But he thinks that he thought it would work better as an album. And his ethos with Lights and Lines was to actually release physical things as a CD, and he wanted to do the whole thing on a CD and have a, a written explanation of where it all came from and stuff. And uh, so that's where it came from, basically. Uh, yeah, that's mostly songs are kind of breakup songs, anyway. But this one is like it's that thing where you feel like everyone's kind of tiptoeing around you, you know. After you know, all, he's, he's so sad and he's just gone through something really bad, and you, it feels like every time you see someone, especially people in my family, it was almost like their face completely changed to this sort of like you know, oh, oh look at him, you know, you know. And even if that wasn't true, that's what it felt like. That's why it's called "Quick Nobody Smile," but it's like. Um, yeah, and it was just, it's based completely around that guitar line that I came up with for it. Um, and, oh, actually, a side note to that, actually, the, the, it was, the version on the EP wasn't the original version because I lost the original version, so I had to re-record it. I remember what, I remembered more or less what I had, but then when I, the one I re-recorded was actually, it was, it was much, uh, I, I'd say slightly more aggressive. And, and kind of had a hollowness to it that I actually like in the end up. But uh, for the release, actually, there's a on the C if you buy the CD, you actually get the alternate mix because I found the alternate mix again. <laughs> because, yeah, yeah. So uh, and then I, I remixed that as well. And then Mike said it thought it would be a good idea to put it on as an extra track just for the CD. So it's it's there.
It's uh, uh, based on a, just that piano part that I wrote, um, and uh, it was originally a breakup song as well. well it, it still kind of is, really. Um, and it, it goes back to the water theme as well at the end, you know, uh, wading to the shallow shallows and all. Um, but it's just I, it just I, I wanted to I wanted to sound kind of like a dance song to be honest, um, and then there's like. There was something. It was always oh, yes. And the vocal track, there's a there's a part of the percussion that that is actually what happened was one of the vocal takes that I recorded. I really it was the best vocal take of all of them. But there was one point at which something hit the microphone. So there's this sort of pop or crack. So rather than get rid of that, what I did was I took that sound and I used that in the percussion for the fucking the drums and amongst the drums so that whenever it happened in the vocal track you don't notice it because it's in the percussion so that's partly where the percussion came from on that too uh, and the rest is just I just want that kick drum and I want it to kind of increase and build up and build up and it's, it's just one piano line it's a fairly simple thing um, and I just want it to I just one of the I like ending albums and EPs on the saddest song um, I might not have done it in this one because it's two EPs, so I pray for water, it's quite sad too. But yeah, so because it's two EPs, it's got, it ends, both parts end on sadness. You know, no happy endings here.